Good morning, everybody, and it's an absolute uh, delight to be here. This is my first official engagement, my first official act as foundation president, and I would like to start by thanking most modestly, most most uh, seriously, the, the people of the uh, uh, board of directors and of the board of the foundation who have thought that they could trust me to become their president. Uh, it's a great honor, and I'll make sure that I, that I dispatch my functions in the most efficient manner possible. I'm very excited to, to, be, to be here because um, entrepreneurship is something I've always sort of admired. Uh, I've been active in a number of different channels um, it, to, to try to support entrepreneurship and in particular ventures, new ventures, um, uh, what we call in French, les jeunes pousses, the small little things that are growing that we must nurture societally and make, bring to a different level. Um, my family, as you probably know, uh, originated also from such a startup. Um, my great grandfather, Fritz Hoffmann Laroche, um, decided that it would be um, an interesting idea to get involved into something else than um, what his predecessor had been doing. And he started a couple of small ventures. One of them was a chemist shop in a small pharmacy, who eventually became the, the company we know today. So um, he spent quite a number of years negotiating with banks, negotiating with friends and family to be able to fund some of his ventures. I remember one of them was a tea plantation in Sri Lanka, which, as you can see, is very different from, uh, from what we, where we ended up. Uh, but, but, but all this uh, participates to a certain respect in the family across the generations of this um, uh, entrepreneurship DNA, how we, how, we, how, we, how we make sure that new ideas grow and become better. And I think that is a historical link with Bill de Vigier, even if Bill was, of course, much later. Um, but he also was able to sort of uh, take uh, charge of, uh, of, his, uh, of his daily life to make sure that his new ideas, his uh, first company, was successful. And um, uh, thanks to him, we are all meeting today. So um, I think that's, that's, um, that, that, that's um, uh, an important um, link that unites us all. We, we do believe that uh, new ideas can be a solution for a number uh, of the problems that society is, is, is going into. I must confess that my activity personally at my generation in um, uh, ventures was mostly um, limited to governance issue. In the same way as I am uh, vice president and chair of different committees on the board of Roche, I've also tried to apply my activity much more in governance in startups rather than in, uh, in um, uh, actually doing it, which, which you guys are. You, you are the people who are actually structuring something. You are the people who are actually achieving a result. You are the people who are actually constructing a business plan and, uh, uh, and, and uh, socializing it to the world. And I think that's, 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 uh, that's something I, I deeply admire. At a very modest uh, uh, level, I tried myself to, to, to also uh, engineer a startup, which we did two years ago, a company called UHCS, where we talk about a modular construction system based on recycled materials. I don't want to waste any time today talking about this, but I was very pleased because it gave me the opportunity to be listed by Bilan, the French business magazine, the French speaking business magazine, um, in, in, um, in 2018 as one of the young entrepreneur of the year. At the age of 62, I was, there, of course, very pleased. <laughs> but okay, that's, that's just an aside. So let, let's talk about the, the general uh, the, uh, situation at the moment. We are meeting by Zoom. We are meeting uh, e e electronically. Why is, how, how did we get to that? You know, a, a year ago, uh, a bit more than a year ago now, uh, we suddenly realized that um, um, this virus, this unknown entity, was uh, something that we are going to have to fight as a system, as a collective system, as society. Now, I think there is a profound irony in this. Um, a virus is one of the most primitive forms of life uh, we know. In fact, it's not even alive. It will only survive if it has a host. So we, to, to a certain extent, are making it possible. And we're making it possible because we were unprepared for it. Now, that has in particular demonstrated the, the weakness of our structure, and I'd like to spend a little bit of time on this. Um, the, 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 the notion that we were sort of growing in, and so the sort of thing we were thinking of not so long ago, was that human system, humanity, um, entered into the age of what um, geologists have called the Anthropocene. We have taken control of the planet, we, we, uh, we dominate the planet in order to create the wealth that we all need. 
Now, that system, which is focused mostly on to short-term satisfaction, on to specialization, has proven uh, to be too narrow to resist uh, an exogenous shock like the pandemic. Um, <clears throat> You know, it, it was not like if it was unpredictable. A number of people had been talking about the danger of uh, contagious diseases for a number of years. Humanity has suffered m many of these uh, infections over the years. And yet we were unprepared. We did not give ourselves the tools necessary to prepare a resilient system to allow us to go into the, the, the 21st century with, without this danger. That's, of course, um, uh, a sign of weakness, but it's also a wonderful opportunity. We, we now have an opportunity to rebuild. It's going to take a couple of years. It's going to take quite a long time, but we're going to have to enter into a new uh, phase where we are going to create a more resilient, more robust system to work together. Um, the, the, the governments around us have all gone um, in health mode. Uh, the regulators have been liberating enormous amounts of money. This money hasn't been spent yet, but a lot of it has been made available. And um, this is an opportunity for entrepreneurship to, to come to its real level. It's obvious that neither regulators nor NGOs or civil society in the broader sense will be able to spend this money intelligently. We need to do it ourselves. Uh, the, the, the creativity, the entrepreneurship spirit, the way of being able to do the most with less resources is absolutely crucial going forward. Uh, that's one of the main reasons why I think that uh, the, the activity of startups is so such exciting. Startups bring innovation, and innovation is what we need now. And we don't need just technological innovation. We need innovation in social system, in the ways of operating. We need innovation in integ integration of all the different parts of society. We need to deal with gender parity. We need to deal to uh, um, ethnicity of not being treated the same way. We need to integrate minorities. There is a huge agenda in front of us, and business as usual will not do. Now, we already have a framework for making sure that this sort of thing functions properly. The United Nations some years ago uh, set, set up the, the, the goals for humanity for the, 20, for the year 2030, the Sustainable Development Goal. There are 17 of them, 180 targets. And if we apply that system, if we succeed in, in, in uh, reaching the 2030 targets, which were devised before the crisis, we would have made, I think, the best use of the crisis itself. So, uh, for, for me, the future looks, um, uh, well, it's difficult to call that, but the, the future looks good because business, business will help us to get to a level in which we can continue to use the, the world resources in a sustainable manner. Now, I would like to emphasize this term sustainable. Sustainability is not um, ju just um, uh, being able to protect the environment like the beautiful uh, marsh you see behind me. Um, uh, sustainability is about using all the world resources, including the human and the social ones, in a, in a way which will allow us to continue to create value for everybody in the long term. And um, uh, the idea that um, uh, green or sustainable for a long time was associated with just protecting nature is a concept that we need to go over. What we need to really construct is a system which will allow us to go on um, creating sufficient value for humanity in a, uh, in, in a circular manner. So I, 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 the root causes of all this is something I wanted to address before I close down my opening remarks. The root cause of all this is a very simple factor. It's the uh, the, the absolute tyranny, the absolute obsession with short-term profit maximization. Now, in the case of a startup, that's particularly relevant to, 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 to keep in, in mind. Um, uh, you are being asked by the bank, by the shareholders, to maximize your, 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 your profitability. Now, as long as you measure profitability just, just as short-term profit maximization, we go, we're going to be in trouble. Um, the, 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 the notion of uh, creating systems which are, which are stable has to do with the measure of impact. If we define success just in terms of financial flow, we are missing part of the equation. Um, to be able to create a positive result, you don't just work with money, you work with talent, you work with systems, you work with nature, we work with the environment in the broader sense. So we need to evolve a new impact measurement system, which will allow us to take into account the social capital, the natural capital, the human capital, 
and the constructed financial capital. So in social, I mean uh, systems, I mean uh, minorities, I mean uh, everybody working together. In human, I mean mostly talent, and that's, that's, that's the talent you have demonstrated to be able to create something new out of something that existed before. The, the natural capital is obvious. We cannot continue to dominate nature in a way where we just ask it to give us something without giving something back. Um, you know, clean water, um, fresh air is not a natural given. It has a cost, and that cost has to be recommended. And of course, the financial cost you, you, you know all about. Well, I just wanted to, 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 to make these couple of points, and I just wanted to really emphasize the last one. Um, uh, the purpose of your company is not to make money. The purpose of your company is to see your idea blossom and your idea having a positive contribution to society in the respect of our planetary boundary. So taking whole account of what social, um, environmental, human, and financial system can offer.